Week four of the college football season, Alabama getting ready to take on Texas A&M. And we have our SEC insider Ben Baby from the Dallas Morning News joining us now to give us some insight on Texas A&M, whom he covers uh, quite often and pretty much every single day of the week. So we want to ask Ben first and foremost, when you look at the overall enthusiasm and energy around this Texas A&M team with uh, Jimbo Fisher now being at the helm, what is different this year than what we've seen in the past couple of years from this football team? And you're seeing a, a team that, that seems to be really focused, really even keeled. Um, you know, normally, uh, you know, what, what happened after the Clemson game is a perfect example. Um, you know, right now it seems like they're kind of still locked in, still going through, um, you know, th th acting how you need to act in the middle of the season last year when Aiden played Alabama really well. It actually ended up being a, uh, it ended up harming them and they ended up kind of losing focus and getting, um, having some having some big losses against Mississippi State and Auburn uh, afterwards. So I think, you know, Jimbo Fisher, the biggest thing he's brought is a sense of just being even keeled. And I think they were a little too up and down uh, with Kevin Sumlin. So, uh, you know, right now you're seeing the dividends of that so far. And I think coming off that Clemson loss, you saw some spark of energy from Jimbo, just uh, some enthusiasm even in that post-game press conference. And you imagine it'll carry over, especially when they come to Bryant-Denny Stadium on Saturday. So next question for you, what is Texas A&M's pass defense look like? Obviously, uh, Alabama has shown us that they've been able to uh, command most teams. Uh, passing efficiency has been tremendous under Tua, even Jalen Hurts coming in and getting some reps as well. Just your thoughts overall on their ability and the challenge that Alabama faces in the passing game against this Texas A&M pass defense. You know, right, that's one of the, the key matchups going into this game because a and secondary has uh, struggled at times with giving up big plays. You saw that against Clemson, and then you saw that against Louisiana Monroe, which was something that was a little bit of concern uh, moving forward. And so, uh, you know, I think the, the matchup heavily favors Alabama on that end. You know, Tua with the way that he's thrown the ball, um, you know, I think he's going to give A&M a lot of fits. I think he's easily the best this best quarterback A&M has faced so far, and that includes uh, Kelly Bryant and Trevor Lawrence. So uh, it'll be a really fascinating. A&M's corners are, are still relatively young and will need to hold their own in that secondary. They struggled at times last year. Will not. Uh, one of the more efficient pass defenses in the conference, and you're kind of seeing that so far this year. So this will definitely be a huge test for the Aggies. And then on the flip side of that, Nick Saban said this Texas A&M team, the best team they will face all season. You got Kellen Mond at quarterback showing a lot of improvement this season. Overall, what kind of challenges does he present to this Alabama pass defense and even a dual threat quarterback that can get you on his feet as well? That's a that's very high praise from Nick Saban. I wonder if that might not be a little bit of grandstanding. Uh, but but all, things, all things being said, I think that the AM offense does look a lot better uh, than it did last year. Kellen Mond has been uh, improved significantly. And the thing that you're kind of seeing is Jimbo, uh, as Nick kind of mentioned in his press conference earlier this week, uh, Jimbo's offense looks a little differently than it did at Florida State. Uh, you're seeing uh, a lot more uh, just modern concepts, a lot of uh, zone reads and read options, and they're using Kellen Mond's legs. Well, at the same time, Jimbo has developed him into a more accurate passer. Um, and, and he's done a really good job of making good decisions, stepping up in the pocket, and showing a sense of confidence that you really didn't see, aside from maybe that Alabama game last year, um, because I think that might have been his best performance uh, as a freshman. So um, he, they are going to have to account for that. AM will get the services of, uh, or expect to get the services of Kendrick Rogers, uh, their breakout sophomore receiver, who had his best game uh, as an Aggie against Clemson. So uh, we'll see. Uh, Alabama will have to contend with a lot more passing options than they probably saw last season, and I know that sounds crazy because a had Christian Kirk uh, at the time, but you're starting to see a lot more development of those receivers, um, so that'll be something the, uh, the Crimson Tide will have to contend with on Saturday. All right, kickoff set for 2.30 Central Time at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Thank you so much, Ben Baby, for your insight with the Dallas Morning News, and might I point out the uh, certificate you have there, fourth and fifth grade spelling bee winner, I hear. Is that correct? Uh, Am I correct on that? Participant. I, would, I wish it was winning, but participant's fine enough. Oh, so. participant. Okay, well, but fair enough. You're a great speller. I love it. That's why you're in this writing business, right? Awesome. Thanks so much for all your uh, insight. We appreciate it. And, of course, for all your Alabama Crimson Tide updates, you can visit us on AL.com. <laughs> this video was brought to you by Caliber a luxury store in Homewood, Alabama that's reviving the finer things in hunting and fishing.